right, here's our second video in section 5.2. We just got done talking about basic factoring. Now we're gonna kinda combine all of the ideas we've covered so far. So, remember when we talked about factoring, there are seven steps that you should follow every single time. Number one, make sure it's in order, highest exponent to lowest. Number two, look for our greatest common factor. Then, look to see how many terms there are. Two terms, three terms, or four terms. Remember, if there's four terms, we're gonna do grouping. But if there's three terms, we're gonna try our basic factoring, okay? Look at those for now, and we'll add to them in the next sections. But look at example number two with me. It asks us to factor completely, so they want you to factor as far down as you can possibly go. Remember, our first step is to look for, uh, is to put it in order. So if you look at A, that polynomial looks like it's in order, so that's good. Our second step is to look for a GCF. So is there a number and or variable you can take out of each one of these? Now remember, when there's a leading coefficient that's negative, remember we said we want to factor out a negative GCF? So try that. So I got a GCF of a negative two and an X. That left me with leftovers of an X squared minus 10 X plus 25. Distribute that through to make sure that that's right. All right. Now, I don't want to stop there, because if I can continue foiling, or excuse me, factoring, then that's what I want to do. So look at the polynomial that's left over. Doesn't it have three terms in it? And doesn't it almost look like a basic factor problem? So let's see if we can basic factor it. Let's see if we can break this polynomial down a little bit more and factor even more than it already is. Can I put an x here and an x here? Remember when we're basic factoring, we're finding numbers that multiply to 25 that add to negative 10? Can you think of two numbers? Two numbers that multiply to positive 25 that add to negative 10? Yeah, I got negative 5 and negative 5. Don't forget your GCF. You still have the negative 2x out in front. But then you should have another factor of an x minus 5 and another factor of an x minus 5. So these are your three factors that multiply to give you your original problem. Now you can write it like this if you'd like to, or if you notice that these two factors are exactly the same, they both say x minus fives, since I have two of the exact same thing, sometimes we can write it as one um, base that's squared. So you could either write it like the orange, or you can write it like the red, and it would mean the same thing. It just means that I have two of the x minus fives. So make sure you're comfortable with that notation. All right, let's look at B. Is it in order? Yeah? Is there a GCF? Is there a number or variable you can take out of each one of these terms? All right, let's do it. Looks like you can take out a 16 and a Y. When you take out a 16 and a Y, what's your leftover polynomial? I ended up with an X squared minus 2X minus 3. Now if we can factor more, let's do it. So look inside at this polynomial. It looks like it has three terms. Let's see if we can basic factor it. Let's see if we can take that y squared and break it up. Let's see if we can find two numbers that multiply to negative three, but add to negative two. Are there two numbers that multiply to negative three that add to negative two? I ended up getting a negative three and a positive one. They multiply to negative three, but they add to give us negative two. So I have my GCF out in front, the 16y, and then I have my two other factors that together multiply to give me my original polynomial. So this one has three different factors, 16y, and then a y plus one, and a y minus three. Make sure that you factor all the way down. All right, now that we've talked about GCF, we've talked about grouping, we've talked about basic factoring, I would like you to pause the video and I would like you to try these three problems. This is a really good way to make sure that you're understanding before we move on. Pause the video and then come back and check your answers with mine. All right, number one, it's in order. Number two, there is no GCF. On this problem I see one, two, three terms, so I know it's not grouping, let's try to basic factor. Basic factor means what numbers multiply to four that add to give me negative five, and I ended up getting an x minus four and an x minus one. They multiply to give me positive four, but they add together to give me a negative five. Hopefully you got the same factors I did. All right, look at number two. Is it in order? Is there a GCF? Ooh, hopefully you saw it. Hopefully you took out that two first. That's really, 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 really important. 
I took out a 2 that left me with a polynomial of x squared minus 7x minus 18. And now if the directions say factor, they really want you to factor all the way down. So let's see if we can break that polynomial down even more. It looks like there's three terms in this polynomial, so let's try to basic factor it. Let's see if there are any numbers that multiply to negative 18 that add to give me positive 7. I ended up getting a negative 9 and a positive 2. Don't forget your 2, your GCF out in the front. And then you should have an x minus 9 and an x plus 2. Hopefully you got those three factors. All right, number 3. Is it in order? Is there a GCF? Ooh, I got a GCF of a negative 4. Remember, I noticed that that was a negative leading coefficient, so let's take out the negative 4. My leftover polynomial is an x squared plus 10x plus 25. Now let's factor a little bit more if we can. So it looks like the leftovers inside is a trinomial, has three terms. And let's see if we can basic factor it. All right, let's break up the x. What numbers multiply to 25 that add together to give us 10? I ended up getting an x plus 5 and an x plus 5. Don't forget about your negative 4 in the front. That is part of your answer. You do need that to make sure that it gives you the original problem back. And do you notice that both of those uh, factors are the exact same thing? They both say x plus 5. So you can write it like this, or remember we can take it and say we have a negative 4 GC GCF, but then we have an x plus 5 squared because we have two of them. So either one of those answers would be acceptable. Just make sure that you're comfortable either way they write it. All right, keep practicing your factoring, and then we're going to talk about some more techniques in the next section.